All right, today we're calculating blups and using those blups and the variance components through our mixed model to calculate heritability, broad sense heritability. And so let's dive right into it. I have my tutorial um, open right here. And I'll be using a little bit of data that I collected in an experiment I ran last year. Um, but before we get into the data, just add the LME4 package and the Diplier package. Those are the two packages that we'll be using today. Uh, and then I want to read in my data. Uh, so this is the data from an experiment. It's raw data, uh, multiple reps, multiple sublocks, um, different genotypes, so on. I need to remove a few genotypes just because of some of the restrictions that I have. So I'm pulling those out with that uh, code there. Um, count just to see, uh, make sure I have everything that I need and just a little bit of data cleaning up. And, and so I'll make my new data set and just call it the DF for data frame. So I can look at it, look at what columns I have. Uh, so I have rep, growth chamber, uh, entry, um, the plant number, sublock, the day uh, that the data was extracted, maturity group, uh, shoot weight, root weight, total root length, primary root length, secondary root length, diameter, volume, and so on. So we have a number of different traits here, about um, maybe up to 10 different root traits that I'm wanting to um, not only calculate BLUPS for, but also calculate heritability for at this particular uh, day of, a, of data collection. So we'll, we'll move forward and I'll show you how to do that. So uh, first of all, I, I just created a little histogram here showing you or it's just to show myself that, okay, for total root length, we have a distribution from zero all the way up, up to um, 600. It looks fairly normal with a little bit of a skew. And then from root weight, something similar. Uh, root weight's measured in grams, so everything from zero up to 0.25 or a quarter of a gram. And I'm going to set all these variables that I'm using as factors in my data frame. And then I'm going to create a new data frame. Um, just for our output today and so that is going to look like like this so I have uh, 292 genotypes in my experiment and so I have them and I don't have any entry filled in there so I'll go and grab the entries using this line of code and so now if I looked at that again it has the entry numbers in there and I wanna to, want to list the row number and the day number. I'll be extracting um, data just from day number nine. And so now if we look back at uh, the data that we have, um, we should be ready. So that's basically an empty data frame that I will now be filling um, moving forward. And I'm gonna create three more data frames here that we'll be using within our loop and, and after our loop. Uh, and then I, the LME4 package outputs a number of, of variance components. Um, we don't need all the variance components um, or the standard deviation, so uh, we're just going to get ready to drop them later on. Um, but we just make the drop uh, function, drop variable here early on. Um, so this is the data, this is what it looks like, um, just uh, the structure. I want to list the, col um, the col column numbers because I'm going to be running a loop to go through them and, and the column numbers that we want uh, that have variables that we'll be extracting data from. So all of the factors, uh, and we won't be, they, they're not numbers, they're not what the data that we'll be extracting from, but from um, column eight to the end of the data frame, those are the ones that we want. So uh, those are columns eight through 20. So we'll be looking at, at about I guess 12 columns of data and that's what I have my loop set up for here so we want to go through each one of these columns from 8 to, to 20 one at a time and calculate blups calculate variance components so that we can then calculate heritability as well before I go through the the loop or send the loop off I'm going to just kind of walk through it uh, one at a time with you so that you can see what the loop does and I'll try to the best of my ability to explain how we built this and and I have to go and give thanks to Dr. Ray Higgins and Dr. 
Kyle Parmley for their um, their creation of this, and and we kind of built this together. But um, we've been kind of um, standing on each other's shoulders as we go through our lab at Iowa State. So thank you to Race and to Kyle for your help. So. First things first, we want to go through, okay, we're doing column number eight because it's the first one in our column num. And so that I believe is shoot weight. And that's what this does, this line here. Yeah, so it's going to name it shoot weight. So it just pulls it from the, the eighth, uh, eighth column. And I want to make a copy of our data frame so that we can um, do this next line and rename the data frame what we're doing here is the eighth column we're going to name it rename it y so that we can run our model um, just over that column for uh, shoot weight in this case so with mixed models we are interested in well a mixed model is a random model or in a fixed with random and fixed effects uh, in this particular case we are using only random effects so we're interested in random effects because we're uh, interested in estimating the proportion of variation and not fixed effects which it, it which is looking at at the mean right um, if you need to know more if you're interested in more of this stuff i highly recommend um, reading dr bernardo's uh, textbook here uh, to learn all about blops, all about mixed models, and random and fixed effects. Uh, definitely a must-buy. You can get it online if you just search for uh, Rex Bernardo and this plant um, quantitative genetics book. All right, so in creating the model, um, before I go there, I have written here, knowing variability components allows us to calculate heritability, and we'll go over that in a little bit. And then random effects terms um, within this annotation or within this uh, model and this package that we're using are distinguished by the vertical bars. So this is how we've always done it. And I'm not sure um, everyone can, you can, the syntax to writing uh, a mixed model, I think is a little bit flexible depending on what package you're using, but this is how I've done it. So Within my model, I am interested in the sublock. So I had 14 different sublocks, and the different entries were always grown in these different sublocks. So I'm also uh, interested in the entry, and then I'm interested in the interaction between sublock and entry. And so these vertical bars or pipes, um, they signify that these are uh, random effects. So we've got random effect, random effect, and an interaction of random effects here. And so we use Y here, and that's why we this previous line shows how we're putting Y as that column. So we're only looking in that particular column. So then we run run our model, and it usually doesn't take too long. Um, sometimes I do get some warning error warning messages, but uh, I've always just lived with that. Um, and I've read some comments on Stack Exchange um, to not worry about it, but don't don't quote me on that. Sometimes I get, depending on the trait, sometimes I get these warning messages, or other times I don't. So we can look at the summary. What this does is this produces a, an object that has a lot of information in it. So it's named model, and it's, a, it's an LMER uh, model. And so there's a lot of information that we're going to go and look and extract some of that information. And here it just gives you some brief background uh, looking at the, the residuals, um, which look fine, uh, looking at the, the random effects. So you get your variance and your standard deviation of your random effects, the observations that we have. So there's about 3,600 plants that I was um, calculating this data from raw data. And then your fixed effects. So this estimate, this will be, um, this will be your blue value, very close to your, your mean. So if I were to type in um, mean for uh, da, 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 data frame, and this was what shoot shoot weight. It'd be something similar, yeah. So point two three two four, so a very similar. And then we want to start to extract variance components from the model, and so the component that we're interested in extracting is uh, variance uh, of the covariance and covariance factors here. 
So this function calculates estimated variances between random effects terms in a mixed model. So we'll use this to start extracting some of the variance components. We can then calculate our BLUPs by using this function. So this <clears throat> coefficient function extracts model coefficients from the LMER objects returned um, by modeling functions, which is this modeling functions LMER. So there are the BLUPs for all 300 entries for shoot weight. And we can just maybe look at the histogram of them and, and here they are. So that's shoot weight blups that we've calculated now for all 300. We can rename those based on the trait, which should rename it um, shoot weight. And then we can bind them together. So the, the data output was just a blank data frame that we had created earlier on before the loop. And the blups are just the the um, the calculations that we just completed and so we've bound those together and we've added them and uh, you can see at the top they're named shoot weight uh, which is what we did up here next we uh, modify variance components a data frame by deleting columns in the variance component data frame that we don't need so this was those drops that we um, specified earlier and so now the variance components have dropped what we don't want, and we're just looking at the variance components for uh, the interaction, entry, sublock, and the residual. So we have just what we want. Uh, we can rename those um, with the trait. So now they're um, renamed shoot weight. We've just added a column to do that. And we've bound them all together. And this is what we have now. Oh, because it's the first one in the loop. After the loop runs successive times, we'll start binding them together. And so that's what I'll do right now. I'll run the loop. It's actually quite quick uh, with 12. So actually, before I do that, oh, well, that's interesting. All right. So it will have shoot weight on there twice because I didn't recreate that data frame. But that's fine for me for now. So I want to reshape the data frame um, just so that it looks more pleasing to the eye so here we go um, oh it does only have shoot weight on there once so shoot weight root weight total root length and we've got our variance components for the interaction for the each ent for the entry for the sub block and for the residual for all of the traits that we're interested in all the 12 traits that we're interested in and away we go so now that we have our blups um, and our variance components completed. Um, let's look at the blobs. Where were they? Data output. Yeah, so here we all have all our blobs for, for all uh, 292 genotypes for each of the, uh, for each of the root traits that I'm interested in. Yeah, here we have shoot weight twice. So just disregard that. So there your blobs are. You have them. And you can run. So if you're using genomic prediction or genomic um, uh, gen genome-wide association studies, these are the numbers that you want to use to input into those um, analyses. To calculate heritability, I used a formula that I found in this paper, which is where they did something similar to what I did. Uh, so your heritability formula here is variance your genotypic uh, variance components over your genotypic variance components plus your error variance over the number of observations that you had. So um, I have my end locus 14 because I had 14 sublocks. So there's 14 different plants that I have. And I believe I've already input that. No, I don't. So what I'll just do is n loc uh, equals 14. Throw that in there. And so now that should be 14. And this should be pulling out of uh, there. Right. So let's calculate heritability using that function. All right, heritability data. Let's see what you look like. There's your heritability data for um, all of the 12, 12 different root traits that we had. Heritability on, my, on this particular 
uh, data set was quite high due to my large number of plants or large number of reps that I had, which inflates it and the quality of data that I was putting in. Uh, just some other, summer, some other summary stats, if you're interested in your max, your min, your mean, your median, um, and your standard deviation. And that's quite simple. I just created these functions so I can run through all of my data frame with those functions. And that actually allows me to calculate my coefficient of variation for my genotype here, which is similar to what they did in this, func in this paper that I was looking at. So I can calculate that, and um, I'm not sure why I didn't, it showed me that error, but it does uh, then calculate your coefficient of variation for each trait. Okay, now that you've got your heritability, your variance components, your bluffs all calculated, you can create a nice data frame that binds them all together, and that's what this line of code is, binding them all together, and we can take a look at this, and what I could do is probably... Uh, rows and all the columns. So now we have uh, the traits, the variance components for the interaction, the entry, the sum block, the residual heritability data, uh, coefficient of variation of the genotype. You got your min, your max, your means, your median, and your standard deviation. Away you go. Nice all summary. So I hope this tutorial helped you out. If you have any questions, please make any comments down in the, um, in the comment section. And good luck and have a great day. Bye.